to do it back in the 50s. Ooh, Diddy Whopper, we're back with the jock. We're back on scene with the record machine. The correct time now is 9.17. Actually, 9.31. 9.31. But that's cool, Michael. What a little... A 1950s rap. Sometimes during eternity, White some boy. cats show up, and one who shows up kind of late is a kind of a carpenter cat from some square-type place like Galilee, claiming he is hip to who made the heaven and the earth, and that the cat who really laid it on us, on us was his dad. Damn. That would be about Jesus. That's Mary's Furling. Dotes Furling and Getty. Dotes Furling and Getty. little lambs eat ivy. A kid will eat ivy red, too. Violets are blue. Wouldn't you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, crazy. You ain't never seen crazy. Oh. Okay, are we ready to go? Are we ready? Okay. Okay, well, it's time to take the chain from the brain. It's time to get back in the people's game. It's time to move it from the lower level to the higher, from the shallower to the deeper, from the one sided to the many, and from the abstract to the concrete. Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Live from the Heartland. I'm Michael James with my co-host. Katie Hogan. And we are here with our friend Jamie O'Hara, the magic guy out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. Good morning to you, Jamie. Good morning. Good morning, You know, morning, every Jamie. year, uh, Coach Russ Bradbird, who has written some wonderful books and uh, runs basketball in the barrio and played basketball at North Park, uh, he... Inter brings me down to the basketball in the barrio that took place last weekend in El Paso. This year I didn't go, but uh, that's because we were bringing the magician, Jamie O'Hara, who he brings to the camp every year, bringing him to Chicago. And uh, he's my favorite magi magician. I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my first time in Chicago, so I'm Oh, welcome. He, he grew up in New York, moved to Las Cruces, and now he's here in Chicago. How long are you staying? I'm here till I leave Wednesday morning. That's cool. Yeah. That should give you some time to get to the lake yeah. and a few other non-tourist uh, places around the city. I've got a bunch of friends, and my nephews live here, too, so I'm going to try to catch up with them after the week. What weekend. are you doing here? Can you tell us? It's some kind of secret deal or yeah. what? Well, I'm doing magic a little bit with you guys and some folks here at the restaurant. Um, actually, I'll tell you what. If anybody wants to learn how to do some magic tricks, I'll, I'll make it easy. If you text Heartland to 90210 or Magic Guy to 90210, give you a handful of magic tricks you can learn right on your phone or your computer. And I'm here because of the 90210 thing. Um, I, I found a way to get more people connected to me as a magician, and uh, the company I'm working with is having an event here. Now, couldn't you just do that by magic? Couldn't you just say, I want anyone who is interested? Don't be a wise you know, guy, I Michael. tried moving to Hawaii I know it's, it's in a illusion. mansion by magic, and it didn't work out either. So, yeah. Let's say that again? I Good. said I tried getting a mansion in Hawaii by magic, and it, it didn't work. Ah. Oh, well, what I is, tried making 30 pounds vanish by magic either. That's a, what is magic? What is magic? Magic is the art of illusion. A magician is a performer like an actor, a singer, a comedian, a dancer. But they do special effects without the movie screen. Well, it's good to have a magician here because in the early days of the Heartland, and we're start talking about 1976, there was a guy who used to perform here called Michael the Magician. And I don't know what he, but he had these steel rings that it would be all hooked together and you'd look them over, you could not see how he'd get them apart. Lo and behold, whip them all apart. That's an awesome trick. It actually is <laughs> o over 3,000 years old, goes back to China. It's called the Chinese Linking Rings. Pretty clever title. You think there were cavemen magician, magicians? I keep wanting you know to call what? you I musician. Were, I don't know if there you were are a musician, men. too. I am a musician, too. I am. <laughs> I don't know if there are cavemen musicians, but there's Egyptian hieroglyphs of magicians doing the cups and balls. A little different than where you like the three shell game, and as an entertainment. We have that on the L here. Yeah, we yeah. have that regularly on the L. Right, well, but we're talking Egyptian hieroglyphs, so this goes back quite some time. On the L, it's a con game. Yeah. I assume it was in Egypt as well. No, I, they did it as an entertainment, which is an interesting distinction. Well, and I think the guys on the train are pretty entertaining to watch the other Indeed. people get as sucked in. As people and, stop. As, they, and, as people and lose their $20 gonna... bills. Yeah. Watch me. And, you know, the trick is always figuring out who's playing with the guy. Right, who's the stooge? Yeah, yeah. Who are, I actually considered getting a number stooge of stooges. to call in on the radio. But oh, here we yeah. go. Oh, yeah. right. now, we, wanted, we wondered how the magic would play out on the radio. Yeah, well, and, and since this we're is live, how it is. This is the famous <laughs> handkerchief 
handkerchief trick. I was up till four. Has anyone ever heard of the famous handkerchief trick? I've I think seen, I've seen it. it. Okay, it's not that I used famous. to watch Ed Sullivan and. Yeah, I it's know. not that famous. It does indeed use three handkerchiefs. Katie, there's three colors here: yellow, orange, and blue. Which do you prefer? Uh, I like the uh, turquoise. The turquoise. I can't pronounce turquoise. Can we call it blue? Sure. Okay, here, hold that right there. Okay. Hold it just right in front of you. And Mike, which one do you like best? Uh, I'm going with the yellow. You're gonna go with the yellow. <laughs> All right, hello. Now, just hold that right there, Mike. And what I'm going to do is when I count to three, we're all going to say Heartland. Ready? One, two, three. Heartland. Heartland. The way it goes. Man, oh. And it lands in the middle of Mike's. If y'all watching carefully, if he caught it, let's give him a little golf clap. Reach in there, Mike. Take oh, it man. This guy is amazing. Right. Now, I wish you could all see this. Gonna, yeah, well, it's going to be on YouTube. So I, took, I put the orange one in my pocket. Katie, go like this. Say one, two, just like that. Yeah. One. Two, Ooh, she's so grace, graceful. Three. Oh, you did three. Good. Okay. When I say three, we're all going to say Heartland. And Mike, you're going to go blow. But please don't spit. Okay? <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Heartland. Heartland. And away it goes. And all that <gasps> stuff again flies all the way around Rogers Park, all the way around Chicago in the great state of Illinois. Reach in there. Take that out. Take it out. Everybody give Katie a lo lovely round of applause. <laughs> I'll be right back. You take it, Katie. I got to take this call. Oh, my gosh. Jamie. So when you first saw Magic as a kid, like Ooh, we all that's did. That's the story. That's the story. There you go. I was seven years He's old. Easy. It's I like, was seven years give old. Him a word. And oh. I had my uh, 47th birthday on March the 9th. And I share a birthday with America Vespucci, by the way. That was the first um, time you saw Magic? No, seven years old. Okay, good. And yeah. at my house in, in New York, in Scarsdale, New York, and, and it was a lady magician named Queenie, which I must note, for some reason, Magic is largely populated by guys. Right. So there's more and more women doing Magic. But this was some time ago. And, yeah. Anyway, I was enamored. I, she was <laughs> wonderful. And I asked my mother Sorry. where she came, where she got her. And my mother said, out of the yellow pages, sweetheart. So I came home from whatever, second grade, and the, and the phone book was rather thick and like it is in around here and I sat in the kitchen where the phone was a little, and I opened the book and I sat there staring at the phone book for some 40 minutes and my mother was going about her business and finally she says what are you doing I said I'm waiting for Queenie because <laughs> I expect her to come like a genie from a lantern and my mother let me continue to look at this phone book for another 10 or 15 minutes before sure. she explained because she was a mom right what did moms meant. say yeah. hey Let's let this ride yeah. as long as we yeah. can. She, she's a funny woman. So, and I got hooked on magic, and my parents were supportive, and I got books, <clears throat> these things you get at the library and the bookstore. Sure. And, um, and studied magic. I still have, I've got over 400 books on the subject of magic, and I still have those books when I was a little kid. I even took notes in them when I was 9, 10, 11 years old to figure out how to do stuff. And it's I was very fortunate. best time to be a fanatic in anything. Yeah. What, uh, who was the most inspirational magician in your life? That's a good question. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um... Is a guy uh, in, he used to live in Carlsbad, New Mexico, and uh, he's over in Lubbock now, now uh, Chuck Smith. And Chuck is an amazing sleight of hand artist. And I met him almost by accident. And I, when I was first starting to do shows professionally, I uh, got a chance to visit with Chuck when I would go over there. And we would just have a wonderful sessions talking about magic and talking about humor and exchanging ideas. We didn't actually do a lot of tricks. We mostly talked about the idea of what it takes to entertain people and make people go, wow. There's been a few other people. My cousin Joe Fields, who's a professional magician in New York, and uh, the late Carol oh, this Fox. This is a familial thing. Yeah. Runs yeah, actually, family. I have a cousin who's a magician. It's a family business. Yeah. Well, how about Harry Houdini? I mean, that's the guy that still sticks out in my mind as a kid growing up in the 40s and 50s. Heard a lot about him. Heard him get about getting punched in the stomach yeah. and uh, losing it. But uh, there's been a lot about him. Was he still a main figure for some people? I or? think for everyone. And he, he had such... Uh, acumen as a performer and a businessman yeah you know it's show business and a lot of performers um don't like the business side and that's fine i mean everybody's wired a little differently i think magicians throughout history have always been um uh, buskers at some level and so they kind of enjoy the the selling and the looking for a new market carnies something like that yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you know, i spent most of my career doing school assembly programs and library shows i mean i do everything from business events to festivals and kids so you, parties but. so you clearly have to have all the tricks in the book to get everyone's attention and to quiet the kids yeah and to Engaging the audience. Focus on me yeah. here. Yeah, that's exactly. I, I've watched that's you right. in a crowd of maybe for maybe eight times uh, with mm -hmm. these kids in El Paso at basketball in the barrio, and you're real good. Although I have seen you get a little annoyed with some kids. <laughs> and, uh, well, uh, the kids made, this year were awesome. You make them disappear. Yeah, the kids <laughs> no, this year were awesome. How was the How was the camp this year? It was fantastic. Um, the kids were awesome. The the other speakers were great. And of course, Russ Russ is my favorite Renaissance man. So. 
You know. He's quite a guy. Russ Bradbury we're yeah. talking about. Some of you uh, may know about him. He's written a couple of great books. Uh, uh, Back Patty to magic. on the hardwood. And he, uh, <laughs> he's a magi- magical guy in that he can dribble. Yeah. And like well, no I, one else. He can dribble. He plays the fiddle. I played music with him the other night. At we've he's often, a hell of a writer. Yeah. <laughs> we've often attributed so he, he w- our existence to the proof of magic in the universe. But getting back to magic, yeah. are there different genres of there magic? There are. That is an astute question. Magicians, it's from Lisa Smith. Well, Lisa is a lovely and brilliant woman. She is um, that. Uh, magicians sort of break it up like this. They close up magic or pocket magic. Pocket um, magic. What they call platform magic, which might be what I would do standing in front of a crowd here in this venue, much like a stand up comic. And then they call stage magic, p- perhaps suitable for a larger audience. And what That's they like when to you call. saw ladies Well, in they boxes. like to call that grand illusion. Because ah. stage magic could also be a mind reader who could work in a small or very large venue without a lot of physical props. Okay. Grand illusion is the elephants and the ladies and the tigers and such. It, they're all essentially magical. Illusions. By the way, everybody, there's a tiger loose yeah. in the heartland. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then some acts are dumb acts, some acts are talking acts. I'll just let you go with that. So sleight of hand is uh, what we just saw. Sleight of hand is largely what you just saw, yeah. If, if I, uh, and then Harry Houdini is the escape artist, grand... Right. It, hold on a second. Go I ahead. Think, oh, Mike's got it right over here. Uh, there it is. Uh-huh. That, that's a Texas penny. <laughs> um, yeah, here. Let, wait, wait a second. I, I think this. Oh, there's another one. There we go. And everything in Texas is a little bigger. That's how Mike got tall. He was in Texas once. Uh-huh. The way it works is it bends. It's flexible. Right? Uh-huh. So when I want to hide it, I fold it up. It goes in my ring, and I can just take it right out like it that. It goes where? In my wedding band. 25 years. She's a lucky girl. Here, you can bend it. It folds when you bend it. It bends when you fold it. it did you break it? Yes. Okay, okay Katie. You really can't play my stuff. If you're going to break it. Here, 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 blow on this side and blow on the other side because Michael spit. Okay. Um, Sorry. It's actually before Lincoln lost weight. <clears throat> they had to make the money bigger. Let's see. Let's uh, in front of the mic. Oh, good. You fixed it. I was worried for a moment. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to keep that as a I'm souvenir. I'm sitting right here. Oh, they call this I'm close, right here. They call this close-up magic uh-huh. because you do it. Close. There you go. Close up. That is pure sleight of hand. Everything pure. I did there I'll is say. completely a lot of time in front of a mirror. Dang, man. Yeah. Well, it's like playing an instrument or being an athlete. Did you ever run into a friend of mine named Dave Palin? Dave Palin? He's a chef who's also a magician. No, I know a lot of magicians, but that sounds cool. It's no, an I interesting haven't. combination, chef and ma- magician. Yeah. I saw a guy doing uh, uh, uh. hibachi chef magic tricks at the same time. Pretty Ugh. showy. Wow. Well, you know, Sharp. <laughs> you're kind of a, you are a conscious human being. I'm sure you, uh, your politics are a little bit to the left. I, well, actually, I'm, I'm something or of a, are you I'm a something right-wing a, anarchist? I'm something, of, you know, I am. That's, uh, I, I would call bad. myself, I, I'm a, something of a libertarian. I'm very, I'm very... Very gracious and open-minded to all points of view. I, I have some. I, I, I'm, I'm sort of across the map, but I would have to call myself. I don't know if a right-wing anarchist, sort of a, but I, I definitely libertarian anarchist with both left and right affinities. <laughs> do you vote? I do. That way. That's I good. And I understand in Las Cruces you have a, a, a new city council and you have new. You have a, the, it's moved a little bit to the left, your uh, gust, local government. Yeah, local government toes local government. It's not really that um, focused politically in terms of major party agendas. I was actually invited to run by, by the other party about three years ago, but I opted not to because I wouldn't have time. Um, uh, I, was, I was concerned not about going to the legislative sessions, which would be 30 and 60 day sessions in Santa Fe, but the fact that I spend between 60 and 100 nights away from home. And if there was a flood and the farmers in the North Valley needed someone to show up and answer questions, I couldn't necessarily be there. And if you don't show up twice for that kind of a job, you're really not doing your job. Sure. Um, and I will, I will note this, that uh, a state senator who's conservative called me and said, you're going to get three, two phone calls. It was like Dickens. <laughs> and, and they're going to ask you to, to, fill the, to run for this seat. And I was blown away because I wasn't really politically active. I assumed that they thought I was articulate, had a lot of opinions, and had a large fan base. And from could do generation. magic. Yeah. And, uh, and then I got two phone With calls. With the budget. <laughs> I got two phone calls asking me to, to run for this position. And I opted not to. It was probably worked out because everyone got voted out. Anyway. On that side of the, yeah, so. 
probably better for my reputation to have not attempted do you, uh, that. What do you do to stay in shape for being a magician? I mean, you, you have to have, you have a lot of stamina. I have a shape. I do no, have a shape. you look great. <laughs> yeah, you're so uh, kind. <laughs> but you got you to gotta be in good condition to do these sure. tricks. And All those keep smoke your and mirrors, right? And, uh, so <laughs> yes, what, I smoke what's, mirrors. What's your personal <laughs> regimen, Jamie? We should Jamie? all legalize mirrors. What? And you are listening <laughs> and watching live from the Heartland Radio. We are broadcast live every Saturday morning over WLUW 88.7. And you can find us on YouTube.com slash Heartland Media. And uh, there are many earlier editions. We hope you tune in. And we're talking with Jamie O'Hara, the magic guy from Las Cruces, New Mexico. And he is about to tell us about his personal health regimen. My personal health. You know, a, a, a couple years ago, I lost a lot of weight, and it was a radical idea. I'm going to start a video. I watched what I ate, just paid a little attention to carbs and sugar, and I did sit-ups, push-ups, and walked. I've got kind of a bum knee, so I can't run too much, and I drank a lot of water. It was a radical idea, and I, mm -hmm. I shed like 38 pounds in two months. Cool. Yeah. Um, I gained weight again, and I'm on the track down, and that's, I just... Just, I, so the I, key is you don't eat much sugar and you don't do much. Carbs. I love I love sweets, so I was just trying to watch them moderation. Because that's this North Beach kind of diet. All or, things. Well, I, I didn't cut them out. I'm Italian. I love bread. I know I have an Irish last name. It's complicated. Um, <laughs> it's a magical. Good combination. Right. Yeah. Magical. Italian and Irish is a really good combination. Yeah. My that Italian my grandmother town. met my they Irish just... grandfather and moved to New York. That's good. I like that. All of her family came. Del Giorno is the family name. Del Giorno. Del Giorno. Oh. Is there a lot of comp Competition these days, uh, you know, the more and more you see things on television, they have magic stores, they have online stuff. Yes. Uh, what, what's it like for a real working magician, uh, a m person who practices the art of illusion and makes their living by it? Has well, it gotten better, worse, uh, more difficult? The past three years have been difficult, I would have to agree. And I think that's been a, a, True a for theme everybody. across the country. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you February of 2007 is the last time I was authentically busy. I will say that the last three months have been better. I'm not prepared to call it a trend. I think that's why it's better. It was better. You know, my, my wife has a steady income. She actually has a lot more education than me, but she has a modest income. She works <laughs> in ministry, but fortunately it's steady. And we have three children. My oldest is now in college. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And engaged to be married and got her wedding dress yesterday, apparently. That's a <clears> bit <throat> too much. Yeah. That's, a, that's a little over the top. Uh, that's a magical. <laughs> um, in any case. Uh, By the way, congratulations to the New Yorkers. Because <laughs> now oh, every yeah. New Yorker has that? the right to get married. There, Sorry. There is a lot of competition, and magicians have a lot of camaraderie. So those that are truly professional will refer work to each other or speak highly of each other. And I think that's true in any trade. Um, there are people who can be very scoundrelly, envious, and difficult, and I just choose to uh, be polite. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice guy you yeah. are. Yeah, well, you just, it, the only thing about folks that act that way is they, they ruin things in the marketplace, whether you're doing kids' parties or business events or festivals, when people don't act well, it, it gives everyone the same impression. Know, if someone comes in here as bad pancakes, they might think every pancake joined it. Not that the pancakes here are not awesome. They are but awesome. You know what I mean. So there's a lot of competition. Uh, so does that mean when before yeah. you get hired, do people say, are you... Are you I hope you're not that kind of mean magician. I have only on very few occasions a had people ask me, and people equate, when I do family entertainment, they equate, equate carpet clowns and magicians kind of in one little group, which is fine. I'm not bothered by that. I just don't look good in makeup. Um, <laughs> you sell balloons, too, at I twist shows? balloons. You twist? I twist balloons, yes. That's cool. Yeah. yeah everybody loves Balloon latex. Balloon twisting is good. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Yes. What is the biggest, most spectacular Oh, Ooh, I uh, that, the question our was. Producer Lisa asked, uh, yeah. "What is the biggest, most spectacular illusion you have ever attempted?" Right. Well, hopefully, moving because London magic Bridge. has a theatrical component to it. Mm -hmm. You actually try to succeed, so you rehearse these things. <laughs> um, so, but attempt can be a good, an appropriate word from time to time. <laughs> On a regular basis, because I don't do any very large shows, I'm sort of a traveling itinerant magician. I do a levitation trick. I think you might have actually seen me do it once, um, where I can make. I a, did. Yeah. Actually, it's coming yeah. back to me. I can make a a, a small child or a, or a slender fit adult appear to float a few feet above the ground, even move around and spin around. I, I did once make a large costume Easter Bunny character appear. So that was a seven foot tall individual and they have, and surrounded at a shopping mall. That was kind of fun. I'm impressed. Yeah. Was his name uh, Easter Wish Bunny? Harry? <laughs> no. yeah. 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 Okay. That's wild. Wild. 
Oh, what was that from the 50s? There was a big rabbit. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to think of his uh, name. Is, Harvey. Uh, Harvey, that's that, right. I had, a bi- I had a rabbit, which was big, but not yeah. like Harvey, but it was named Harvey. I do work with a live bunny. Back in the late bunny. 40s. You work yeah, with you a live bunny? Yeah, I was wondering about I you. Do. Did you bring your bunny with you? I did not. I did not, because um, they charged they charge um, you on the plane. extra on the plane. Yeah. My and how many bunnies have you had over the years? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> and what do you do with them when they're... Stop! <laughs> do they poop in... You know, that's a splendid question. Uh, our producer, Lisa, just asked, do they poop in my hat? <laughs> Lisa, would you, like, would you like to come up here? I just love, I just love are, the fact that I now have a These are some graphic questions you're coming up with. Oh, well, you got really a few good. producers. You're surrounded here. by producers here. Only we're not producing. You know, at least it's funny you should say that because I do wear a top hat when I work. I've got this cool leather top hat. You can go to my website, themagicguy.com, and see what it looks like. Um, and kids will ask me, are you going to pull a rabbit out of the hat? And I say, no, because if there was a rabbit in my hat, he'd poop on my head. So we're like simpatico here. Yeah. I, I you need do, a job. I do bunny tricks that are safe and comfortable for the bunny. And uh, yeah, bunnies are den animals, so they like being in small spaces where they're cool and left alone. Are you saying den, D-E-N? D-E-N. They like little tiny holes. Kind of like men, like caves. Wolves are den animals. Den of iniquity. Right. Yes. Den of iniquity. Have you ever performed in any dens of iniquity? I did do a Christmas party once. Yes, and he's proud of it. I did do a Christmas party once for a strip club. And what was so funny was they asked me to come down and talk to them. And so, and I, I don't visit strip clubs. I think they're fine. I just don't visit them. And so it was a little awkward because I've not walked in before. And I go to the back and I do a little magic. And I thought what was most interesting was the, the manager and uh, the owner were there. And they said, listen, we're having our Christmas party. It's a little late on this date. It's not here on site. It's at a hotel. Some of our special clients and all of the employees are going to be there. We don't want you to do anything crass or crude or use foul language. And then he said, basically, we had a community last year and he was very very crude and just because we're in this industry doesn't mean we don't want some just nice Wholesome. entertainment right yeah. and I, I really felt for the people because I thought how odd that they have to ask that and I don't do any you know I might do a little innuendo and I might make people chuckle at things but nothing I wouldn't do in front of anyone because we all find the same things intriguing and enticing and titillating humans can we say that on the radio <laughs> yeah and absolutely so, and <laughs> certainly on YouTube so, Cater so I did and, and they were delightful actually the only people that were a little bit difficult were some of the their clients because oh, they were a little bit, bit yeah they were great <laughs> so, cool and I've performed in all sorts of private parties with all sorts of in and frat parties and everything else I just do my thing and laugh and love people and Jamie O'Hara time, let so. me ask you you live uh, in Las Cruces you uh, you're real close to El Paso and the sister city Ciudad Juarez uh, see si. we know uh, you know we've had some good times over there in Juarez eating food after the basketball in the barrio camp uh, and uh, in recent years, the border has gotten very difficult. I'm, uh, I'm curious to know if you still go across the border and if you've ever done any magic tricks in Juarez. I was engaged to do one show in Juarez years ago, and I got lost, and I never arrived, and I never even heard back from the people. And while it was a very frustrating traffic experience, I guess it's a very short, humorous story now. But <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> I uh, do not cross the border as frequently as I used to. I used to go across the border to buy uh, medication, you know, antibiotics or maybe asthma medicine. But it's a little more complicated now, and y- your credentials, it takes longer. you got to uh, have a passport, Right, too. you have a passport to cross the border now. And there has been quite a bit of increased crime in Juarez. What's interesting is the overall nature of the border environment and the economy there in El Paso and Juarez, is, except for the crime, which is sort of another matter, is really very peaceful. There's not a lot of issues. And you'd be amazed how many people come from Mexico to do shopping in El Paso. Sure. Um, whether they drive over to use the mall to fa- go to the fancy stores or buy stuff downtown. El Paso is also home to huge, huge number of births. It's the, there's a midwife study center in El Paso simply because there are so many births to practice wow. with. They know what causes that. Latina women coming across to have babies. <laughs> it's true. Huh? Hundreds, thousands a year in El Paso. I, I was unaware of that fact. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. You so have you ever new. seen a magician in Juarez? <laughs> I have. I did see a magic show. Uh, uh, a, a magician, uh, a fellow magician who lives in Dallas. Because they got a whole scene downtown. People singing, you know, performing, yeah. giving speeches. There's a neat little cafe downtown right now that I've actually done some music at and they're going to have me do magic. It's called uh, The Percolator. 
neat little place. Cool. Neat little place. So I have uh, a magician, a uh, fellow magician of, uh, of mine, years ago invited me. He was doing a, a show with several other magicians, some of note from Mexico. I don't recall their name. And my wife and I went down. It was in a lovely small theater. And it was a full evening magic show with like three performers on the bill, and it was all magic. It was really delightful. It's the only time I've taken in a magic show in Juarez, but the answer is yes. Juarez is real interesting. There's some old pictures of a, uh, uh, a what was it, a, a lion versus a buffalo, or, you know, just some, they used to have some big spectacular events, and you had Pancho Villa. There were casinos uh, there, yeah. too. Yeah. Were there, are there any, is there a, is there a Mexican ma magical tradition? Is there any different, I mean, if you're there in the Southwest, you're getting influences from a lot of places. Correct. And I'm just wondering if there's a, a certain genre or trend I, among Mexican magicians. I will tell you something that Mexican, uh, a Mexican magician, and again, his name has left me, ha has brought to the world of magic and family entertainment. It's sort of a uh, adjunct to magic, is the art of twisting balloons. And it has its history twice in Mexico. One's a little creepy, but it's true. The Aztecs used to make all sorts of sacrifices to their deities. Uh, and they would take, I know what's coming. They would take the... Uh, uh, entrails, entrails and, and twist the casing, which we now use for sausage, into a, a, a balloon and leave it in, as a donkey and leave it as a sacrifice. Oh. Well, in the 30s and 40s, there was a, a magician... He's making magical sounds. A magician from Mexico who would twist very large balloons and into all sorts of shapes and created a beautiful stage act. And he traveled the world. And the art of twisting balloons into these little shapes became extremely popular, largely because of his pushing it forward really? and then they got the smaller balloons and it became this wonderful uh, art form, art form. Yeah. yeah and I, I've been twisting balloons since I was about eight I have fairly limited repertoire but I have a lot of fun with it there's a lot of shtick when I do it kids it, it's it's so popular everybody loves latex <laughs> grown-ups kids <laughs> the, the, the you do b balloons for gr everybody loves balloons. Yeah. Jamie uh, do you have any uh, any goals like uh, any new tricks you want to learn or new illusions you want to master uh, new areas new genres of uh, your art that you want to Perfect. What are your uh, kind of future plans? Being a young, uh, kind of a right-wing anarchist guy. <laughs> that uh, is a splendid question. You know, <laughs> You're good at this. Good well, at this. we are. Uh, we are live from the Heartland. You're listening to live from the Heartland on WLUW 887. <laughs> also broadcast on YouTube.com/slash Heartland Media. And I'm Michael James with my co-host. Katie Hogan. And we are here with Jamie O'Hara, right. the Chicago's magic guy Sound out of Alliance. Las Cruces, New Mexico. So, that's an excellent question. Yes, I do some speaking, and I like doing more with less. And an area of magic that's always been sort of a personal challenge to me, because I don't like screwing up people's belief systems too much, whatever they happen to be, is doing mind reading or mentalism. And I know on several occasions I've done a mind reading act and had people come after me after the show and go, how did you know all those things? Can you talk to me and have a private reading? And while some people may do those things, and that's fine, it was an act. But this person was fully persuaded that I had some sort of insight into their future, which was good because it, it spoke well of my performance. <laughs> However, I really love that area of magic a lot, but it's not an area I have focused on as a performer, as an artist, and as in my trade. I do some mind reading in my show, but I've not focused entirely on it. And so it's an area I, I'm working at and trying to develop maybe an act that has a lot less stuff in it, whether there's some sleight of hand or mind reading or mentalist tricks where you can walk in and really engage an audience, not just with humor, but with something that feels magical with less props. Because magicians kind of like props. Right. Yeah. And, and it would make you more accessible to more radio shows across the land. Right. It, right. Yes. And it would mean I have to carry less stuff around. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Cool. Although the stuff is fun. So. I, I'm a little I curious. So. I'm back to the political thing here. Um, <laughs> you know, um, here Six. I have this progressive, to the left guy, Russ Bradbird. And two of the nicest people I've met through Russ Bradbird are hippie-looking guys. Yes, I have, yeah. Who probably have altered their consciousness. I know that's a libertarian I, I thing. No, I and have. there is another, there's a piano player named Steve, uh, a friend of Russ's. I'm not know ringing if, a bell. All right. So, but both of you guys are guys I totally would have, mis, uh, you know, mistakenly assumed were to the left. Well, I've been to 13 Grateful Dead concerts and a whole bunch of other stuff. That's yes, the thing. The That's what happened. I noticed Just that shows along to go, the yeah. way, people who like the Grateful Dead might be trading stocks and uh, right. voting for Nixon. I am, I, 
you know, here's I heard a didn't great, matter what music you listen. Michael, to you always had you that prejudice, right? And about I, and the deadheads. If you hear my guitar playing, you're going to hear he Jerry did. Garcia, Stevie Ray Vaughan, <laughs> and my guitar playing. But I would have to say the greatest quote I had about economy comes from Walter Williams, and it said that capitalism is the only economic system in the history of mankind where you can get ahead by serving others rather than enslaving them. Um, I I think greed sucks. I don't care whether you're poor, in the middle, or rich. Greed sucks. Yep. And now, it sucked an entire economy about three years ago. Right, well, yeah, we can talk about how long a that took to happen. sucking but, sound. Yeah, greed sucks. And, uh, and you are right. A lot of that was, and it was greed from every direction, but that's another topic. It was greed from people who wanted more than they could bite off and greed who wanted, from people who wanted to sell something that no one could afford. But that's another topic entirely. Yep. Yep. I, I believe that there, it, you know, not everyone can be homeschooled, not everyone go to public school or private school, but all three can exist. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have a certain amount of diversity and, and dialogue in our culture, it, you're not going to be homogenous. When, uh, very it's nice. just not going to happen. That's you, very what, nice. I can't say that every person who has some political affiliation or votes in one direction has some monolithic worldview. I don't believe you, you talked about Governor Cuomo just uh, uh, made it okay for uh, uh, same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, I wonder sometimes there's a show on uh, one of the channels called Sister Wives where there's a plural marriage, right? And I kind of wonder, and I don't know, and I'm not trying to be challenging or difficult. Well, or there's a lot of Mormons running for president. But I, I wonder how some of the folks that are proponents of same-sex marriage feel about that because I would wager that some of them are uncomfortable with it. Yeah, so what does that mean? My point is that people don't have monolithic viewpoints and sometimes if they open their mind they might realize, wow, I see how others might not be at ease or agree with what I'm trying to say it should be fair. Because I don't think that all people who believe in what Governor Cuomo did believe precisely the same way. Absolutely. And so I think that there's an assumption that everyone believes one way because they go to this rally or belong to this group, and I think that's silly. I remember our friend Dave, uh, Dave Megacy once said, who lived in San Francisco, he's with the uh, Players Union, the NFL Players Union, he, he once uh, said something I remember gave you a light bulb, Michael, which was... Um, you know, that was the center of gay organizing for a couple of decades. They were out and about and freer than in a lot of places. And uh, he had a, a run-in with one of his gay brethren in San Francisco. And the guy just said to him, he goes, hey, just because I'm gay doesn't mean I'm going to be left wing. Right. And well, the, the Lock Cabin Society. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. And I think, I think it was, it was well, a great moment that, for, that, for Dave. Um, a Court of Appeals number nine decision a few months ago was the Lock Cabin Society that filed the suit. Absolutely right. Right. Well, why do you have to agree with everyone that you have some, you don't have to agree with everything. No, you don't. No, you don't. Has anyone ever had a relationship with a, a spouse or a, a, a child? You, you love them. You don't always agree. see to eye to eye on right. everything. It doesn't mean... We're, we're bad at that in this country. We're bad at uh, figuring out how to talk to one another across differences anyway yeah. and how to love people regardless. I think we're I think exceptionally bad at that in we, the U.S. We got a bunch of ADD. What? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Well, how does magic uh, further... Back uh, to magic. How does magic <laughs> further I love this road. world it's harmony? Of... How does, you know what? Magic believe, ma helps people believe in the impossible. Magic helps people suspend their disbelief. Yeah. Magic brings a little bit of joy and wonder into the world. When I saw Queenie the Magician when I was seven years old, I thought, oh my gosh. Very young children, when they see magic, they're not as impressed as maybe five, six, seven, up to 100. Because when you do a magic trick, they're like, well, of course. Of course, you're a magician. They think it's neat because it's visually appealing, but they don't think it's impossible because right. you're a magician. Whereas once we learn more things about the physical universe and we know that solids don't go through solids and things don't disappear into once bare hands. Once we're hand, taught to be logical. Go, wow! And well, so, a magical cool. thing wonder. for me Excellent. was my dad producing plays, and one of the plays he produced was Man of La Mancha, and that had that song, The Dream, The Impossible Dream. dream. I'm not going to sing it, right. but, uh, we could you know, we could. Harmony, it'd be it's fun. a good thing. <laughs> yeah. it's a good dreaming thing. and uh, dreaming about I the do. impossible is probably good as long as we remember that sometimes there are just some hurdles that uh, we have to take on Indeed. with Indeed. full force. Right. Uh, you know, my, my primary focus in my career, 25 years, almost 25 years full-time as a magician, has been school assembly programs. And I travel throughout the Southwest primarily doing motivational assemblies for kids. And I talk to them about um, the dangers of alcohol and drug abuse. I talked to them about the Where importance. do you get off here? You haven't done well, either. Abuse. <laughs> um, abuse is different than having a wine. Uh, yeah. Um, and um, and I talked to them about reading. 
This this is out of control. We can go folks. in all kinds of directions here. Yeah, um, <laughs> magical. I talk to them about uh, reading. I've got a science program. Uh, I've done about 2,000 school assemblies in the last uh, two and a half decades. That's and so wonderful. And about almost 900 summer reading club programs at libraries. So kids are coming to the libraries to are see there me still with their parents who came to see me when they were little. I read today yeah. that yes, but they have school computers budgets and less have, books. have the first to go these days in school budget cuts are the librarians. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's sort of tragic what's going on. Sort of, music it's programs completely get cut tragic. pretty badly too. Yeah. Well, music, but they're used sports, to uh, and libraries are, yeah. you know, art. Yeah. Art and, uh, I'm a huge proponent of arts education, and which which some people would say, well, well, you you know you have these you know conservative libertarian views. Why is that not congruous with we are creative ask, beings? Ask some of your right wing friends, well, buddy. I, <laughs> <laughs> See, let's All right, and that's the end of the show. Let's not make, okay, <laughs> Katie has the last word. Let's not be closed minded and make assumptions about people. No, no, you um, said you said uh, you know there's a perception. Some of these guys. There's a perception. You know why? Because those people are. Not not good at getting their message out. That's why. Oh, I yeah. thought it was the Democrats that weren't good at getting their no, message they're, out. No, they're quite effective. Um, I, uh, I'm so glad to hear that. I, See, they, are, they are. Right there is a, is something that each side believes about the other. Yeah. That, you know, everybody thinks the right wing is really good at getting out their message. Really? That the, that the Democrats, it. not only do they, you I'll know, stay chew on that their topic. young. I'll stay on that topic with one comment. Okay. The, this is a broad stroke, but the, the large majority of people who consider themselves conservative or what you call right wing are generally the rugged or fascists in, or, or fa no, stop I, it michael now, the that's fascists, going a bit the fascists too far. in the other parts of the world were leftists not on the right but that's oh, another no. story we could argue a lot of stuff Hush, here it's my show um, <laughs> magically took over the so, show <laughs> from us <laughs> where was i going it what was were easy about? um See, you lost my chance. I thought you're a funny guy. No. Um, we were, we the were right. talking. The right, okay. Thinks. Thanks. That the left. Oh my gosh, I don't talks, know where I was going. Uh, that they get their point across better. Yeah, we were talking. Oh, that's it. Rugged individualist. Right. Magical most people, recall. Most of the people who would consider themselves conservative, however open minded or closed minded right, right. they may be in personally, that's yes. a psychology thing, is they're rugged individualists. So they don't necessarily willfully or organically associate themselves with a larger group. It's That's not a, an easy propensity for them. It doesn't make them better, worse than other people. It's, it's just the just way they're thing. wired, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't do the group thing nearly as adeptly, apparently, for some reason, our modern political landscape, as those who might consider themselves decidedly on the left of things. They tend to do group actions and group affiliations and, and uh, Better. See, I've I think that's one of the dilemmas of why, and, it, and I don't think it's a problem. I just one of the reasons that why people on the right are largely ineffective. But I think po politics. If you want to run for president, you should be disqualified because you want to run for president. I think we should have a six-year. I think you should have a six-year term because people get elected and they they try to govern for two years, but they're trying to steer the ship. And even yep. if it was the guy on their team or the totally. gal on their team, they're still trying. To, then they spend two years trying to get elected again, which right. is baloney. Which is just total waste spend, of our time. They just grumble about they should them. Spend two you're the steering the ship, guy. and then they should govern for four years. And I really don't believe in term limits because I'm a free market guy. I don't believe in term limits either. I think that's what elections are for. Oh yeah, yeah. You go, girl. And I totally understand what what you just said because actually I am uh, I am a mixture of conservative right. and liberal and rugged individualism. You can't spend money you don't too. have. Yeah, I think everyone is. In the Boy I think everyone Dude. is. And, the, and that, and that the division, fellowship. the polarity <laughs> business is uh, what messed us up. It's, I concur. It, it didn't come from I us concur. all. I concur. I think that we, we can show loving kindness and, and understanding to people even if we have disagreements with them. And okay. it, I think it makes those disagreements elevate to a point where they're an intellectual discussion and a policy discussion and not name calling and bitterness and misunderstanding. Amen, Any my final brother. Words? Any good, final actually. words, Jamie O'Hara, the magic guy? That was pretty um, good. If you want to learn some magic, text Heartland to 90210. There's a couple of magic tricks or text Magic Guy to 90210. And I must say, it's been an enormous blessing and honor to be on this program you're this morning. So Thank well, you. we're glad Jamie. to have you. You're, and you're, uh, this is going to be the hottest item on YouTube, I'm no, sure. really. <laughs> we were all over the place. It'll be good. <laughs> yeah, i got to come back to Chicago. So you don't have any balloons with you, do you? I do, but they're sort of tucked in here. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I let's see. Get He's got a balloon. He's getting it out. Oh He's doing goodness. something. Are we going to do a card trick to end us?
Any what? intestines? I, I do, but they're in use. <laughs> I do. Yeah, large and small. Uh, Let me just trying to find a balloon. Yeah, I'm here. trying to find a balloon. I'm just gonna I get it out. If you wonder what he's doing down under the table, it's, it's looking for the balloon. It's really good. I really am. He's I'm got, looking for the he's balloon. He's got one bag that okay. looks the like bag six has about different 60 things. Yes, parts. <laughs> so Katie, um, yes, sir. a bunny, a mouse, a dog, a giraffe, a snake, a hat, a dinosaur, a mighty mouse, a sword, a heart, a snail, or an elephant. Those are the Gotta go with heart. Heart oh splendid. We'll do a we'll do a heart color for Katie. Mm. And that'll You've been be listening to Live from the Heartland today. over WLUW 887, Chicago Heart Sound Heart. Alliance, and we're brought to you every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. And I'm Michael James, along with my co-host Katie Hogan. We're here with the magic guy out of Las Cruces, New Mexico, Jamie O'Hara, and he's making us a heart. <laughs> and uh, you can get more live from the Heartland on YouTube.com slash Heartland Media. <laughs> and we encourage you to do good in the world, because the world needs all the good that you do. You all power Thank to you. the people, Thank you. over and out. Right Yay. Thank nice, you. Jamie. Thank you. It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> Eat your oatmeal. I had so much fun. <laughs> the trickiest so part much. is getting that to roll. They always laugh. Bill and I and all the other guys know that men actually have a degree of intuition. I'm going to prove it. I have some cards here. If you'd remove any card from the face-up pack, maybe one that you prefer or fancy the number of the colors. And you're going to look at it. We're all looking at it, sweetie. Oh, we're all looking at yeah. it. And you're gonna, that's actually my favorite part. I want you, no, I'm not joking, you call my wife. I want you to take this marker and write your name big and bold across the face of the card. Write my name across the face of the Big and bold across the face of the card. Across the whole entire thing, nice and big. Beautiful, and don't cap the marker, please. Ooh, she, she follows directions well, you got a good one. Yeah. All right, now hold the card as though you were going to place it back in the deck, and then tell me when to stop. Stop. Put the card back, is that right? All right, good. Now, Bill is going to show you evidence of his intuitive abilities. I'm going to give the cards, I'm going to give the cards a little shuffle. I'm going to mix them up a little bit, and I'm going to pass them by, sir. And as I pass them by, I want you to touch one. Just touch the one that has Sandy's vibe on it. Okay? Just simply touch that. It's very, very thoughtful. He's an engineer. I like that. No. Ooh, ooh, I just reached out. Yeah, but that's fun. Um, and, oh, it's a six, but if I turn it upside down, it, oh no, it's still a six. Um, would, you, would you take the marker, please, and rather than write on the face of your six, would you write on the back? Okay. Nice and bold. Mine. Yes, that which is, starts with a B and ends with an L. Okay. And now here's where your second chance comes in. My wife's been married to me 25 years. They need to be served. They do. <laughs> I, I, I got that. I've been doing magic at restaurants for 25 years. Uh, okay, I'm Thank sorry. You. Appreciate, I, 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 appreciate the direction. I didn't think you saw her. I, I was aware. So. Well, maybe you can share. You know, <laughs> body to hear. So you can be here next week too. No. Oh, no. no All right. So, Bill, I'm gonna go like this, and you tell me when to stop. Time to stop. Right there. I'm gonna place your card right in the deck where he said it. This is over in just a few months. We're gonna see where it lands. Those smell fabulous. There's your card. I'm removing the card from the one adjacent to it. You did it. Oh my god! It actually, wasn't that that was good. Now here's where it becomes amazing. I'm going to take Bill six and gently rub it on the back of the nine. And Bill's signature jumps off of the six and on to the back. Wow. And I'm sitting right here. And you are. And this is yours. And you have a fabulous. Oh, thank you so much. And it so was an much. honor to meet both of you. Oh, thank you. That was, that so was great fun. Thank really you. Good. Thank you. You bet. I think so. I think so. I have a question is whether I filmed it well. <laughs> I know you did a good job. <laughs> I think we got it. Did you find that thing you No, I have it. I'm just getting this Sounds like fun. Well, hell, if Michael's out there. I was going to. Aww. Are you doing Night March? No. Yes, there is. I don't like crowds. Well, Night March is a much smaller crowd than that. I bet it is, yeah. And that's why they do they do it in different neighborhoods every year. This year it's 75th and Jeffrey. Yeah. The lesbians know about it. Where's Belson and did the West Side? 75th and Jeffrey is south. way south, south way shore. Not um, there's a bus that goes. Right the Jeffrey bus goes there. Thank you. Um, so you know, we 